Hello and welcome to EdPlace. Thank you for joining EdPlace Live Lessons from your home. I'm Miss Mill and you've joined us for an English lesson today. EdPlace is an online digital learning platform for children in Year 1 to Year 11, offering English, Math, Science and 11 Plus self-marked activities written by fully qualified teachers. We're bringing live English, Maths and Science lessons into your homes during the school closure period, so why not join us over the next few weeks as we tackle some key topics? You might find it useful to have a pen and paper handy so that you can make a note of key ideas or jot things down. You'll also need to access your EdPlace account. If you don't have an EdPlace account, do not worry. You can access all of our activities if you go on edplace.com. We'll go over this in more detail when we get to this part. So welcome to today's English lesson with Miss Mill on the dreaded possessive apostrophe. By the end of today's lesson, we're aiming to have achieved either one or all of the following three steps. Firstly, to understand how to use apostrophes accurately. Secondly, to identify whether apostrophes are used for contraction or possession. And finally, to apply this understanding to example questions. So, to get us started, what actually is an apostrophe and how is it used? This is what an apostrophe looks like. It's a bit like a comma, but it hangs in the air rather than sitting on the line. Apostrophes are used to show contraction, which is when two words are joined together. For example, when do not becomes don't. It is also used to show possession, that someone owns something. For example, Billy's dog tells us that Billy owns his dog. Or the three girls' bags shows us that the bags belong to three girls. I'm going to start with some quick revision to make sure you know the basics of apostrophes. You need to be confident with this or you will find possessive apostrophes quite tricky. So, as I mentioned, apostrophes can be used for contractions to join two words together. Here are four examples which can be made into contractions. I want you to pause the video now and see if you can write the correct contraction. Think carefully about where the apostrophe should go. Off you go. OK, well done. The main rule is to remember that the apostrophe replaces the missing letter or letters. So, for I am, we lose the A to create I'm. And the apostrophe goes where the A was. This is the same if there is more than one letter taken away. So, it will becomes it'll, and the apostrophe replaces the wi. For does not, the apostrophe replaces the second o to make doesn't. And for she is, it replaces the i to become she's. But beware, there are some exceptions that just don't follow the rules. Here are two contractions that you need to watch out for. We've got will not, and that becomes won't, and shall not, which becomes shan't. You should have learnt about apostrophes for singular possession in year two. I'm going to go over it really quickly because it's so important that you are confident with this to help you understand apostrophes for plural possession. So let's start with the words. What does singular mean? Singular means one. So there is one person or one thing. And possession tells us that they own something or many things. Let's look at some examples. This child is Emma and she owns two very adorable puppies. To show her ownership, we can write the sentence. Emma's puppies were incredibly adorable. An apostrophe for possession should always be in the word which owns something. So here, Emma is the one who owns something. It shouldn't be in puppies here because they do not own anything. Here's another example and this time it's over to you. I want you to see if you can write a sentence using an apostrophe to show that the chicken owns the eggs. Pause the video now and give it a go. Great, well done. Here is my example sentence. The chicken's eggs were safe in the nest. Here, 
I have an apostrophe in the word chickens because the chicken is the one that owns the eggs. It comes after the N because there is just one chicken who owns the eggs. Hopefully you are now feeling really confident with apostrophes for contraction and singular possession. Now we are going to move on to apostrophes for plural possession. Now all this means is that more than one person owns or possesses something or lots of things. Let's get started by looking at making nouns from singular, one of them, to plurals, more than one. This can get tricky because some plurals are regular and all you have to do is add an S and others have a different ending. See if you can complete this table, making the singular nouns into plural nouns and working out if they are regular or irregular. Here's the first one to get you started. The plural of boy is boys because we have one boy and many boys. So it is a regular plural because we just add an S onto the end. For this reason, I have put boys in the regular plural column. I want you to have a go at the rest of them, making the singulars into plurals and working out if they are regular or irregular. Pause the video now and give it a go. Okay, here are the answers. How did you get on? For egg, we just add an S and it becomes eggs, so it is a regular plural. Child doesn't become childs, so it is irregular because it becomes children. Ball is regular because we're just adding an S to make it balls. And the final two are irregular because baby, we lose the Y and add IES and tooth becomes teeth when it is a plural. So the big question, why is it important to know if plurals are regular or irregular? Well, this really helps us to know where the apostrophe needs to go to show possession. Let's use the examples from the previous table to help us. For regular plurals, we add an apostrophe after the S. But for an irregular plural, we need to add an apostrophe and an S. So, for example, to show that one boy owns a skateboard, we need to remember what we learnt about singular apostrophes and add an apostrophe S. For the plural, we put the apostrophe after the S. For regular nouns, we do the same with the singular and add an apostrophe S to show that the child owns the toy. But for the plural, we take our plural noun children and add an apostrophe and an S after that. Let's look at more examples. Here, we have two brothers who own a book. Can you write a sentence to show that they both own it using a possessive apostrophe? Think carefully where the apostrophe should go. Pause the video to write your sentence now. Well done, here is my sentence. The two brothers book was really interesting. Here, because brothers is a regular plural, we just need to add an apostrophe after the S. OK, now it's time for you to have another go. Here we have three children with their balls. How could you write this into a sentence with a possessive apostrophe? You know the drill by now. Pause the video and get writing. Here is my sentence. The children's balls were bouncy. Children is an irregular plural. So we add an apostrophe and an S after children. Remember, the children own the balls. So that is why the apostrophe is in children and not balls. Here is a trick that can really help you check that you have put the apostrophe in the right place. The thumb rule. First, cover the apostrophe with your thumb. Does the word before your thumb own what comes next? For example, in this sentence, if I put my thumb on the apostrophe after trees, do the trees own the branches? Yes, they do. Lots of trees own lots of branches and that makes sense. What about the next one? If I put my thumb over the apostrophe in girls, it tells me that the purses are owned by two girl. This makes no sense. It should be two girls with us at the end. So I need to move my apostrophe to after the S. 
Right, it's time to practice what we've learnt. So we know that apostrophes can be used for contraction when two words are joined together or possession to show that somebody owns something. So let's look at the first sentence. There are too many toys to fit in the box, William complained. The apostrophe in toys, let's work out if it's needed. First of all, is it a contraction? Is it two words joined together to make one new word? No, that wouldn't make sense. Then let's check possession. Does the toy own anything? Again, if we use our thumb rule to cover the apostrophe, the toy doesn't own anything, so that doesn't make sense. We don't need the apostrophe at all. It's just a plural. Second sentence. Mum's voice echoed from the kitchen. Put any that don't fit in the cupboard. The apostrophe in mums is not a contraction. It's not two words joined together. Let's check that with the thumb rule. If we put our thumb over the apostrophe, does mum own anything? Yes, she owns her voice. So that one is correct. Then we've got an apostrophe in don't. Number one, is it a contraction? Is it two words joined together? It could be do not. Let's put it back in the sentence to check. Put any that do not fit in the cupboard. Yes, that makes sense. So that one is also correct. Now that we've gone through possessive apostrophes together, you should be able to have a go at this activity. Sign into your EdPlace account or visit the website www.edplace.com to have a go. We will go through some of the questions together once you have completed it. Remember, you can watch this video again if there is anything you're unsure of. The activity you are looking for is called Know Your Apostrophes Marking Possession 3. If you have an EdPlace account, go straight to English. Those of you without an account, click the Learn tab on the website and then click English. After this, our route is the same. We click Year 4, then select the Curriculum tab and then go to Writing, Vocabulary, Grammar and Punctuation. You should then find a list of activities under the title Use Possessive Apostrophes with Plurals. Select Know Your Apostrophes Marking Possession 3 to get started. Let's double check we're all on the correct activity. This is the introduction page you should be able to see now. If you can't see this, go back to the list of activities and check you have selected the correct one. If you can see this page, pause my lesson now and have a go at the activity. I'm going to go through three of the questions in the next part of the lesson, so don't worry if you get stuck. Let's go through some of the questions now. Question one reads, write the missing word to complete the phrase when the singular noun is changed to a plural noun. For example, the man's car becomes the men's car and you need to do the same for the child's toys, making child plural. For this question, we are making child into a plural noun which becomes children. And because it is an irregular noun, we need to add an apostrophe and an S. So the answer is the children's toys. So we just need to write children's in the answer box below. This is a different type of question. Here you need to write a phrase which shows the possession. In this sentence, the girls own the pens. We know that the word which owns something needs to be the one that has the apostrophe in it. Girls is a regular plural, so we just add an apostrophe after the S in girls. So the answer is here. This is a great question and it will really test your understanding of possessive apostrophes. Here you have to work out which one is wrong and then correct it. Remember, you can use the thumb rule to check. So if I cover the apostrophe in women's with my thumb, it tells me the cars belong to the women's. That doesn't make sense, does it? The plural of woman is women, which is irregular. So I should add an apostrophe S. So the correct answer would be women's with an apostrophe S at the end. Let's recap what we set out to do today. How did you get on? Do you now understand how to use apostrophes accurately? Can you identify whether apostrophes are used for contraction or possession? 
Are you able to apply this understanding to example questions? If you have met one or all of these, well done, you have met the objective for today. We know that some of you will feel you need a little more practice to really master these skills, while others of you are ready for your next challenge. To help you know which activities to select next, here are some suggestions. The activity we just tried is listed as Activity 5. If it felt a little tricky for you, why not try Activity 1 or 2 to gain confidence in the skills you need? Then move on to Activity 3 and 4 to continue practising possessive apostrophes before you give it another go. As we finish up for today, here are other places you can find us or access support. We look forward to working with you again soon and keep practising in the meantime.